They can't handle it. They just don't know how to respond. The symptoms they're starting to show, those severe infections of OMB, which have been lying dormant for so long now, those severe infections, they're starting to resurface. Now, for those that don't know, OMB, it is the acronym for the disease Orange Man Bad. This week, doctors at Woke Memorial Hospital, they have been working overtime. They have not seen this many patients at Woke Memorial since Fauci infected America with his modernized leprosy. Now, there are a variety of symptoms for OMB depending on the diagnosis. Symptoms for mild cases range from delusional thoughts to the heavy usage of woke boner words on social media. Now, some examples of words that harden the woke boner, misinformation, mythical racism, and oppression. Symptoms of those suffering from a slightly more serious infection of OMB include passionate screaming at those people you don't agree with, protesting for causes when you have no idea what the hell you're protesting for, and demanding to be identified by your preferred pronouns. Now, most of the time, these cases are mostly seen on college campuses across America, where kids in their late teens and early 20s are being indoctrinated and brainwashed and they don't even know it. And what makes it even worse, thousands of these kids, they are taking out student loans and paying six figures for their indoctrination. Not only does woke you ruin them ideology, it ruins them financially. But the symptoms of these patients, they pale in comparison to those who are 100% infected with OMB. Unfortunately, once the infection reaches 100%, there is no known cure. Most patients who reach this level of infection, they're working in the mainstream media. And you can make a strong case that the people suffering through the worst cases of OMB are our favorite yentas on the set of The View. Their symptoms, their symptoms not only affect them, it affects everyone around them. Uncontrollable flatulence, toxic mouth farts, uncontrollable tremors, emotional outbursts, failed attempts at comedy, the constant need for attention and validation, public humiliation, out of touch with reality. I mean, the list goes on and on. Earlier this week, the New York Times, they released a poll. They polled likely voters in six swing states. Now, I'm sure the thinking going into this was, our fearless leader John Biden is being demonized by the shit fucks in our own party. We need to publish some positive propaganda showing that America is showing unwavering support for our zombie of a president. There was just uh, one problem, one small problem for the New York Times. America does not support John Biden. The New York Times, they put Johnny B. Biden against Nick Cayley and Ronnie the Mantis. They asked voters who they would vote for. In all six swing states, Johnny Biden lost. Next, the New York Times put Johnny B. against an unnamed Republican. They gave likely voters a choice. Pick any Republican. Doesn't matter. It can be Ronald Reagan. It can be George Bush. W. It could even be a proven failure like Mittens Romney. Hell, if they really felt like losing, they could choose Mike Spence, arguably the worst politician in the history of American politics. Matter of fact, Mike Spence is so bad, he could be battling Bamani Jones for the crown of huge embarrassing failure. Unnamed Republican versus John Biden. John Biden loses by 16 points. But that's okay. That's okay. Because none of those people will be competing with Johnny B. 2024 is shaping up to be a rematch of the spray tan versus the wrinkled man. There's just no way that John Biden loses to the Trumper, right? <laughs> According to the New York Times, Biden loses to Trump in five of the six swing states, and it ain't even close. Now, obviously, this caused the symptoms of OMB to be on full display at The View. Yesterday morning, our favorite Yentas, they had absolutely no control over the release of their toxic flatulence. They were reacting to Donald Trump's behavior during his pretend trial in New York City. They could not believe that a former president would be visibly frustrated over the Justice Department being weaponized against him. They discussed this pretend trial for a few minutes with their legal expert son, Hostin, lecturing the audience on how to properly behave yourself during a trial when you're being targeted for political reasons. Then they moved on to the frightening realization that John Biden could lose the election to Donald Trump. 
Now, at this point, the beauty's on the view. They once again proved why fewer and fewer people are wasting their time watching this garbage. This segment was absolutely atrocious. In the span of about five minutes, we were treated to unfunny comedy from the deflated whoopee cushion. We were treated to the fear-mongering of Sun Hostin. Ladies in whoopee cushion, I'm so scared! The orange man once had access to our nuclear codes! He will start a war! Um, I'm not sure if you realize this, Asuncion, but it wasn't the Trumper who started a war. I don't remember Trump sending military aid to Ukraine. I don't remember Israel having to defend themselves against Hamas when Trump was in office. Matter of fact, throughout the four years that Trump was in office, the war on terror was essentially over. During this segment, we were also treated to the great pretender, Alyssa the Farrah Griffin, complaining about mean tweets. And we closed the segment with toxic lies and propaganda from the whoopee cushion with a nice assist from Sun Hostin. Of course, both Yentas utilize their own personal strengths here. The cushion let her powerful flatulence escape from one end, while Sun Hostin released her toxic mouth farts from the other. Watch for yourself. I was yelled at. And I've had a judge who is unhinged slamming a table. Let me be very clear. I don't tolerate that in my life. I'm not going to tolerate it here. Shut up. <laughs> he lacked complete uh, impulse control. It scared me that he had any, the, the proximity that he had to nuclear codes for our country. That I'm surprised ever... he's not, and Whoopi has said this often, I'm surprised he hasn't been held in contempt. This Ooh. reminded me of a story when I was working for him. I was on Marine <coughs> One with him flying back to the White House, and he had gotten in this, he saw that a Republican senator criticized him, and it was some small ball article. He writes a scathing response on Twitter, and I talked him out of it. I was like, listen, this doesn't make, this is punching down, you're going to bring more attention to it. Yeah. He was convinced for approximately one minute till we got off the helicopter and he immediately tweeted out. You see? No impulse control. No, impulse no control. less discipline than any adult I've ever seen. See, this is what I'm with. afraid about, because uh, this whole week when I was gone, I, uh, those polls came out, which mm -hmm. I know you hate, about yeah. how he is really it's neck and neck, pretty much, with Biden <clears throat> in some swing states. And I thought, this is a guy, if he wins, it's all about revenge. Yes. He just wants to get... You know, Nixon had an enemies list. Yeah. And yes. Was, a lot of people felt it was very an honor to be on it. And he mm -hmm. But he was out to the get FBI. these people who are political enemies. He, this guy will deploy military, yeah. the military, yeah. against demonstrators. If they really thought it was a witch hunt, he'd be winning. See if it, and, and, he's it, and he's losing. And he's losing. There is no way they can be proud to be on this show. I would be embarrassed to be a part of something like this. I would rather work the drive through at McDonald's than be associated with this group of Yentas. This show is an absolute embarrassment. But let's start with Sun Hostin claiming that she is afraid of Trump having access to nuclear codes. Um, why? Have you seen our current president? Sometimes I don't know if he knows the difference between the nuclear button and the fire alarm. But to her credit, though, Sun Hostin, she was partially right here. It was completely unintentional, but Asuncion was partially right. There was a lot of fear when Donald Trump was in office. There were a lot of people afraid. You know who it was? Our enemies. Why were they afraid? Because they knew he wasn't fucking around. Sun Hostin also claimed that I am surprised, oh, I'm so surprised that Donald Trump hasn't been held in contempt of court. Really? Really? Um, are you running out of charges? Are they running out of ways to incarcerate the Trumper? Have they really reached the point of desperation where they are trying to lock him up over being in contempt of court? Several beauties claimed in that segment that Donald Trump has no impulse control. Alyssa the Farrah Griffin, she even shared a nice little fairy tale about the time she worked for Donald Trump and how she could not convince him to not send out a mean tweet. Oh, mean tweets, they are so dangerous! I don't know about you guys, but... I could sure go for some mean tweets right about now. Let's just review here. One of their biggest problems with Donald Trump is the fact that he's a meanie. <laughs> okay. 
uh, when Donald Trump was sending mean tweets, gas was under $2 a gallon. A gallon of milk didn't cost as much as a six pack of beer. A week's worth of groceries didn't equal a car payment. Speaking of cars, when Trump was being mean, you could buy a decent used car for less than $10,000. Today, you can't buy a car with three wheels for $10,000. When Trump was in office, groups like Hamas weren't emboldened. They were scared. When Trump was in office, Vlad kept his Putin in Russia. He wasn't Putin in Ukraine. Now, you tell me, which would you rather deal with? Would you rather deal with some mean tweets or deal with all this bullshit that we're having to deal with today? Big Red Joy Behar, she shared another one of her irrational fears. I'm scared that the orange man will deploy the military against peaceful protesters. Uh, let me get this straight. You're afraid that Trump is going to weaponize the government. The same Trump that did not weaponize the government in the summer of 2020 when a lot of people thought he should have. The same Trump that allowed these peaceful protesters to turn the streets of major cities into bonfires and defecation centers. Big Red claims to be afraid of that guy, but she's not afraid of the president who is actually weaponizing the federal government. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Wasn't John Biden and the FBI investigating parents because they didn't want their kindergartners indoctrinated? Wasn't John Biden investigating parents because they didn't want their son to become their daughter at school? I don't remember Trump going after Hill Clinton. Remember all those emails that have been conveniently forgotten? I don't remember Trump using the FBI to launch an investigation into Hill Clinton. Do you remember seeing her mugshot? Sun host in Asuncion. Sun in the whoopee cushion. They closed the segment by claiming that as of right now, Trump is losing the 2024 election to John Biden. Um, according to who? Of course, they don't reveal the source of this information because it doesn't exist. If John Biden is defeating Donald Trump, why are the Yentas so worried? If John Biden is going to win, then why are they trying to incarcerate his opponent in every woke city across America? What is the point in doing all that if you're not worried about losing? You know what I think the shit fucks are really worried about? Trump is just a distraction. They are using Trump as a deflection from the real problem. The real problem for the Democrats they are no longer united. This situation in Israel, it has put them in a lose-lose. A portion of their voting base is supporting Hamas. John Biden can't do that publicly because he would lose the rest of the country. Their party has been destroyed by the woke fungus, and now they're starting to realize it. You can't please both sides. The overwhelming majority of Americans supportive of Israel. I think it's something like 70%. The problem for John Biden He's not strong enough to stand against the radicals in his own party. And I think that weakness will ultimately lead to his demise in this election. But give me your thoughts on this. The Yentas on The View can't control their symptoms of OMB. Sun Hostin claims to be afraid of Donald Trump. Big Red is afraid that Trump is going to weaponize the federal government when it's actually John Biden who's doing that. The Whoopi Cushion claims that Trump is losing when, according to their own Bible, the New York Times, Trump is winning. Hell, the unnamed emotional support shovel is beating John Biden at this point. Does John Biden have a chance? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.